uh, I think the worst thing also was finding um, dressing up clothes. Not dressing for Joe, up. but for whichever girlfriend he was with at the time. There was a little nurse's thing, <laughs> or, you know, a little teacher's thing or something, whatever. And that was a bit weird because you sort of think, why have you got this under the bed, you know? <laughs> Welcome back everyone, this is Wafflin, however this week we have a very special guest. Here in the hot seat, it is my actual mother. <laughs> um, obviously Theo still can't make it, but hopefully we'll be back next week. Definitely. So mother, how does it feel to finally be here on the set of Wafflin? <laughs> Um, crazy, crazy. Bearing in mind, I clean this room. No, you don't. No, you don't. So, uh, you know, it's it's it's. it's Joe's mum still cleans his house. No, wait. Well, that's bollocks. That no, I do it myself now. She did to a point, but I like paid a, a wage. Wait, is that even more? Is that actually a bit like derogatory? You what? shouldn't. You shouldn't pay your mum to. To no, be a mate. No, no, no but shouldn't. even so, your mum shouldn't be cleaning your house, whether you're paying her or not, at the age of twenty-five. Anyways, um, obviously we asked you guys to send in a whole load of questions as mum is, well, is, are you our first special guest in real life? No, we had Elliot. Elliot and Bruce. Yeah, but in real life. Oh, in real life. Yeah, Elliot. Yeah, Elliot. we wanted to get some like real life questions to her, but obviously how dodgy that <laughs> are, like the sort of things I'm actually going to have to say here, like is, is mental. Um, but the first one I actually want to bring up. Mm. Wait, can I come in? With okay, go on then, mate. The very first question. Go on, go on. Have you seen Waffling before? I have. I have. Uh, so. Yeah, I follow. Uh, well, I, I don't follow it now, but I used to in the very beginning. Wait, why don't you follow it now? Oh, well, I wonder. because, yeah, uh, well, for a start, sometimes some of the things that come out, I don't want to know. I don't want to know what Well, like you what? Guys. Like what? Um, like last week, how, how you finger a girl? Oh. Probably. Yeah, I don't want to know those sort of things. <laughs> I really don't. I think personally, waffling is a great space for the lads. And but we have a large female audience yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, and the ladettes and the ladettes. Well, like fine. maybe, maybe it is more uh, a younger person thing. Your also, mum watches every single one. <laughs> I know. She's probably jealous. She probably wants to be in that seat right now. Really? Well, I, I mean, maybe. I, <laughs> I mean, she likes hearing how her son <laughs> pleasures females. I don't think she enjoys that part, but I think she enjoys the sort of maybe why most people watch it the the relationship that we have yeah. with each okay. other. And yeah, no, I, I actually think uh, it's a good space for you guys to talk about what you need to talk about because mm. there isn't much available out there for for males. I think. Well, yeah. So, how so does it feel actually thing. seeing like obviously the YouTube videos that I used to make? Because like, mm. obviously you've been around well since the, <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you've been with me a long time now. No, <laughs> no, but you've obviously like been there since the very beginning of seeing me try to make it from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that we're obviously doing something like this, how does that, how does that seem? Because it's very different to, I guess, like the, sh the sort of different. videos that I did at the beginning. Yeah, it's very different also because you were sort of like one of the first. Right. So if you think of that. Um, from that point of view and from a, a mother's perspective of wanting her child to go into a career, yeah. uh, it was a harsh one because I didn't know where YouTube was going to go. Well, so when I came to you and said, Mum, I'm dropping out of college oh, to pursue horrendous. YouTube, like, because there are a lot of kids or like, you know, people that have probably gone to their parents or thought the idea of going to their parents and say, you know, I want to drop out of normal education to pursue a career that isn't normal. Yeah. And especially, you know, YouTube wasn't even proven in any way. It had only been around 10 years when I said, look, this is what I want to do. Yeah. How did that feel for you? Well, it was the number one thing that whenever I spoke to anybody who obviously when you were getting well known uh, they would say oh because of your son my 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 son daughter wants to be a youtuber mm. and that would be um something i'd then have to say well i don't even know what a youtuber is would you, you like know? to try and discourage them from it um no i don't think so i i i, I never discourage it because obviously life changes and we're always moving forward particularly in the media and with social media yeah. i mean coming from a generation that really remember we didn't have television. Yeah. Television was yeah, introduced. So, so now I'm saying, Mum, I'm not going to university. I'm not yeah. doing college. I'm that doing this thing that's sort of like made up. Yeah. That's not even real. You can't even, you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't the go to work. The thing was when you came home and you said your tutor had told you to give up college. Well, my, that yeah, because my, my film production, B Tech 
Uh, and was this shooter? Uh, was it? I mean, you can bleep bleep the name. Was it Dan? Yeah, but he was a good guy. Don't bleep the name. He was a great guy. He was a no, good no, because I, I, pretty much everyone else at college was saying, Joe, don't drop out YouTube. Like, why would you do that to go and pursue YouTube? That's a piss take. Like, yeah. get your qualifications and then do, and then yeah. maybe see what you want to do. But he was like, when I was saying to him, I was like, mate, look, now is the moment. Like, I'm the momentum with YouTube with breaking into it. It was like you need to if you've got a, the ball rolling now. If I wait a year. Old news, forgotten about. I, yeah, you know, yeah. I may not have made the World Cup song, the Ronaldo picking up girls, the WWE moves in public. You know, these videos that really did it for me. I may have yeah. missed that boat. And it's I, I had that feeling. I would think I was on 50,000 subscribers. And I was like, I need to capitalise on this. And and my heart isn't in school, like, you know, co college work. I'm actually, the time I'm spending doing college work, which was still film, I'm actually spending doing YouTube videos. So I might as well just go for this full blast. Yeah. And um, I think the the ironic thing for me is that when you first started, it was finding ideas and things like that. So as a family, we would have to sit down and try and give Joe oh, some you? ideas. Oh, yeah. I was like, because like, obviously yeah. I get any of all of my creativity from mum. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, is, that is where Go it comes from. No, no, no. Where, like, obviously my mum is naturally funny. Like, doesn't even... Oh, doesn't, no, 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 no. No, but doesn't realise it. No, no. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even trying to gas you up. I'm just literally like, the fact is, you have this natural, like, funny, like you're funny, but you don't realise it. Obviously, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're really creative and all of that. And it's just sort of like, that is where I wanted to ask you about ideas because I feel like you were on my wavelength. So when it came to like the World Cup song, I remember, do you remember being in the garden, just like mm. sitting there trying to formulate that idea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just, yeah, there's so many times from the very beginning, that's where it would always be. I, I, I needed to bounce that ideas. Is, but that, that that was also Theo's initial role oh, in your yeah, relationship. the I ideas, mean, man. Other than the friendship. He was always the ideas, man. Yeah, because yeah. like, obviously I've, I've been able to think out of some ideas, but I, I yeah. need that sort of like someone I can bounce off. And obviously, yeah, Joe's yeah. the sort of guy that you give... Uh, just a thought to or even a subject or something like that and hear them run with it yeah. you know what I mean but it's that initial I suppose like uh, networking brainstorming that type of thing yeah it's yeah. like it's like a brainstorm essentially yeah. you yeah. sit and you chat with someone and you yeah because that's what yeah that is how you yeah right like you I, I wouldn't need you to say the whole idea I no. just need you to say either a, a rough phrase or something or just uh, yeah. something and then that would spring my ideas Absolutely. now what's interesting is obviously you've seen the point at which I went from doing that full pal and that bit, I'm being like, mum, this is never going to run out. I'm going to be able to do this forever and ever and ever. I mean, slowly getting to a point where I'm like, mum, I, I don't like doing this anymore. I hate it. Yeah. I don't like and making that, YouTube videos. That yeah. actually wasn't even that long after because you, you had made multiple videos. I, I think back in like 2016, 17, where you said, I don't like, I don't like this anymore. I don't want to do it. Well, like yeah, there, there was that's one. the point. I mean, after making the song Kitty, which obviously mum was in, Tom, roll it over the top now. <laughs> obviously mum played the pigeon. I think when I, had to, I came pigeon. to my mum and I was like, right, mum, for this song that I want to make about our cat, can you dress up as a half pigeon, half horse? And just like, then you got to dance. Would, you, would you ever say to him, well, I mean, that I, I'm, well, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not vibing with that idea. No. No, I made you it. you always no. back every Basically, idea? Basically, everything Joe's asked me to do, I would do. Well, it's because I, 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 I was probably just like, still do, hence me cleaning his house. <laughs> it's a great idea. It's just for the videos. Uh, no, I do clean it. That's bollocks, actually. Uh, I do. do. <laughs> Mum. Yeah, you do. You I do. do. You do. The, first thing, the first thing that happened when we walked in today is I'll you, touch it. you, you sprinted him in the house and he was like, no, it smells like bins in here. It's it smells like bins, and yeah, you have to throw I, everything out. I, I was at a photo shoot, I was a music studio in London, I was doing things, okay, and uh, there's no excuse to be honest, but like, look, your mum's your mum. <laughs> Anyways, what am I saying? Yeah, no ideas. <laughs> I mean, basically, yeah, uh, the ideas that you threw at me, um, yeah. you know, we did, and we did it as a laugh, mm. and we did it as a family, and it was fun, and I mean... You know, as much as I don't like performing as such, I'm right. not particularly a good performer. Oh, that's the wrong thing to say. Oh, but man. <laughs> I didn't mean We're not it. going down that route no. just yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, uh, yeah, I, I wanted you to see you succeed. And, well, and I'm proud of that. videos like, you know, RKOing my mum? Yeah. Tom, roll it now. Like when I, I came to you, I was like, Mum, I want to try and RKO you. And then you yeah. you come back and choke slam me. Like yeah. Things like that. Yeah, like the uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it's like you always went along with it. And that is that because you saw the vision? You saw what I was going for? Or, yeah, was it just literally, He's I want son, him to I succeed. Want to but is yeah. there nothing that you would have said no to? Um, like if I was just like, right, Oh no! Don't make it weird. Yeah, no. no yeah, yeah it, oh no! I remember. <laughs> well, luckily at that age, you weren't sort of talking about that sort of stuff, and I didn't really get to know about it. Too much. <laughs> no, 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 right? Not what you meant. No, that's not what I meant. Anyways, no, no. But actually, you brought up an interesting point. You rode the wave up with Joe. Yeah, yeah. and it's safe to say that you're you're not at the peak of your career. Well, it's because anymore. like oh, she was went there when I had all the. The ideas just came as in like, we'd think of stuff and it would work and then it would work, it would, it would never fail. All, all it would do is bang. And then she's seen it where it's like, then I got to a point where I was like, I'd try stuff and it would go wrong and then you try stuff and, and it not work out. And then I started to, well, just sort of, that was happening, happening as a result of me not really having the passion for it anymore. And now we're obviously at this point where we found waffling and some people are like, well, this is the best stuff you've ever done because it's more yeah. real. It's more mm. you being you with the boys and, you know, seeing seeing more of like, yeah, like the real you come then, through. So obviously you had this like this huge ride up to, let's say the fight was the height of fame. We'll yeah. put it that way. Because I don't yeah, yeah, think, yeah. when I say peak of your career, I don't mean I think you're doing your best stuff then. Yeah. But like that was the height of the fame. Yeah. And then obviously it was a bit of a roller coaster from then on. Mm. What was that like? Mm. Yeah, for you. Yeah, because you have to watch Joe going oh, through, uh, well, and arguably one of the worst periods of your life. Yeah. Oh, it's imagine. one of the most, like, when, cause obviously a lot of the YouTube boxing and all that now is very staged, very set up. That is the most legit fight I think there's ever been. Yeah. Yeah. Build up all of it, investment, yeah. both of us absolutely putting our whole hearts on the line. Me and JJ, like, going for it. And when, and the way it unfolded, obviously as a mum ringside, when she's seen me, you know, Every time, whether it be playing for Brighton Ove Albion football, like doing my car driving test, doing whatever it was, me bottling it under pressure and not delivering, she's seen that so many times. So obviously to ring, ringside and physically see that happening must have been fucking mental. I think the thing is with uh, the boxing, I can't say um, any more about how proud I am of that situation. I mean, it mm. was incredible to be part of. Um, and I would like to take this opportunity, if he's watching or if he doesn't watch, to um, say, well done, JJ, and, and congratulations, and I think you're one of the hardest working people in the world, and you deserve all the success that you've got, because I think um, without you, Joe's career would have been um, not so colourful, and I think that has been exciting. Um, but putting that aside, just to see how much you both put into that fight and that you wanted to achieve the top of the game in that area, mm. to become the, or is, it, is it the biggest white-collar boxing yeah. oh, it still is. match yeah, in yeah. history? Mm. I mean, that will never be taken away. Well, and until think, someone beats it. <laughs> well, yeah, no, but yeah, to but think the, that the it, first, it, so yeah, it also yeah. came from an idea that of just you and Theo. Yeah. You know, yeah. you and Theo as mates, really just messing around. And um, and then the journey, well, that's another, another story because the journey was hard from oh, a mum's yeah. perspective. Well, yeah, because that was the thing. It, like, you were making Joe's dinners and stuff yeah so i did all i could and we as 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 much as um you know we wanted to win don't get me wrong i wanted joe to win uh our level of commitment was harder because we just had my personal trainer really and a boxing coach and me cooking dinners and doing the nutrition side but well, we and wanted the thing is we wanted to show that that, that basic that was it the basics you know? is all you need you don't need the flash and the glitz and the glam of like whatever the yeah. top of the range stuff is in london for example like we could just rely on pure hard work commitment working together like was that we wanted yeah. to show that that prevails um, and obviously, I like <laughs> didn't pan out. And well, it, I mean, it, it like it still, it, it yeah. still could have. I mean, I still look back. I didn't. I mean, we didn't share any of that journey together. Well, that's I, went, the thing, I yeah. went to the fight, but I still, I still truly believe it that it could have gone in your favour quite well, easily. Well, ev ev yeah, like everyone I've really spoke to knows knows truly what what I am about and capable of in terms of like sports wise, whatever. My downfall has always been when it gets mm. in front of the bright lights. Now's the time to perform, Joe. Bottling it. Right, and it's happened multiple times, but that's the thing. Like, I think the ultimate thing, 
um, that I well, I've wanted to show moving forward. Hence, with the DJ stuff, still pursuing the music. Like all of my preferred stuff now is live camera work. Yeah. That is still a. Yeah. I, I never used to be able to do that. It would always have to be re-roll. Like as in, do a retake, do a retake. I need to be able to edit it. Whereas now, like I'm getting more and more comfortable doing that and. Do you know what I mean? And that's Even what I'm taking this, away. Like waffling. Yeah. I know people say it, it's changed and it feels like more professional right. now, however. This used to be the most overproduced podcast mm. in the space, and now we do nothing to it. It yeah. literally it goes it's out. It's raw, isn't it? It's yeah. really yeah, well, raw. That's, that's what, yeah. And that's that I mean, that's I suppose if anything, of my nerves of today yeah. is is experiencing that, the fact that it is just talking and and giving that emotion out, uh, you know, what well, the questions are going to be. This is what we were saying. This It's definitely harder to come on a podcast than it is to, to be to like... To be a pigeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to so be a like, pigeon. Like, do you want to be in my video, my short little <laughs> video, where no one's going to know anything about you? Yeah. You have to talk for like a minute, if that. Yeah. Whereas this is an hour of people diving deep into your... Yeah. Darkest Psychic. secrets. Now, guys, we have a quick message from our sponsor. Now, firstly, Mother, have you ever done investing? No. Never. Well, the odd thing. Sort of com see, com so. You've maybe yeah. been put off by the idea. You don't quite understand it. Well, we have Free Trade, right? Which is basically Wafflin's best friend. I believe they've got the most most ad reads ever yeah. on Wafflin. Brilliant. So what they're saying is that for you know the likes of you, you, I, and all of you, if you go to freetrade.io slash Wafflin and you register and fund your account, you will randomly get allocated a free share worth between three and 200 pound. Now this, obviously you know more than anyone, they have a great app. Can you the, actually sort of like expand on it a little bit? The app is, yeah. Jenny, even you could use it. Ooh. You know, this is the easiest app for investing. It's just clean, you see what you want, buy it. That's Boom. it. And it stores in like your little wallet. It has your portfolio, how much money you've made. Also, it is FCA authorized and FSCS protected. So basically completely trustworthy and safe. So if you want to get involved, obviously the disclaimer I must say is don't forget um, when you invest, your capital is at risk. The value of, in of investments can go up as well as down and you may receive back less than your original investment. However, let your money do some work. If you could afford to lose it, why not put it into something like this? And what? let's not forget that just signing up, you get a free share. Anyway, this is free money. Yeah. Essentially, so it's freetrade.io slash Wafflin. That is freetrade.io slash Wafflin for your free share. Back on with the show. As as my mum then, mm -hmm. moving forward, mm -hmm. like what do you, what in your most ideal scenario, hap like I do next career-wise? Do you think like oh, Wafflin, go with it? Obviously, you know about the music stuff that's going on behind yeah. the scenes. Do you think... Joe, you know what? Make videos. You're good at that. Go back to the YouTube videos. Oh my like, God. you obviously <laughs> know me more than everyone. What, what do you think? Because so many people, obviously, week in, week out, are like, oh, Joe, you should try this. Joe, you should do that. Oh, we like it when you do this. But I is there an opinion that you have? If anything, my opinion is, is that you started off in YouTube when it was mm. fresh and at the beginning of something. And it's like any career that you choose in life, you've got to continuously progress mm. and work on that and I think you did a conversation with The Rock when the Rock, he yeah. said that you know you have to work Spend. at what you do and and put passion into what you do and I think all I would say is that you've got to go with what is truly passionate in your heart and that way then you will shine yeah I mean, yeah I yeah. think all of us if you're not doing something that is passionate to you it, it shows. Well, that's what the name of Eddie Hearn's podcast, No Passion, No Point. And that's ah, something that his well dad... Done, Eddie. That's mm. the thing that his dad said to him, is that uh, if there's no passion, there is no point. Mm. And that is the facts. Like, uh, like, my results of what I'm doing are literally night and day difference. If there's passion, it's likely to be fucking quality. If there's none, it will be so shit. Like, in yeah. it'll be like, mate, he's rubbish now. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's the biggest thing. It's like... Slowly, as my passion's gone down for but something, that you, mean, you see... That doesn't mean to say, though, it, that you are going to achieve that passion at the first attempt of you trying oh, something. Oh, no, yeah, 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 there's and, failures. And so don't yeah. let... Um, and I don't want to call them failures, but don't let those things that are maybe not at the top where you want to be yeah. uh, define what you're going to do. Mm. And I think with the boxing, that is what I said to you after that fight, mm. is don't let that that defeat define you, mm. you know, because 
what came out of well, look at it now. What came, with the TikTok and YouTuber thing happening now? Oh, well, the I event, mean, the, event, the event yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean that is amazing. The way it's moving forwards. Look at um, Logan Paul Mayweather and the the Paul family. What they've achieved with it. They are, they are riding off well, the back run of with you. It, but that's the thing. Absolutely. But, but fair play, but it's, in like, it's all good coming up with an idea. So I, I can say, oh yeah, I started it. But they have run with it. And yeah, so they, like, yeah, but fair play. Do you know what I mean? Money talks, and at the oh, end of the day, oh, there's huge money in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, what people don't realise, Joe, is that you got into it when it was passion, not when it was about. Not money. when it was about the money. So we didn't earn any you money. Know, you from wanted it. To, no. you just wanted to create just good wanted, content. Yeah, I just thought it was a sick idea. Like, as yeah, in, like yeah. imagine me against KSI, I, like my uh, YouTube idol growing up. Absolutely. And now I'm fighting him in a boxing match, selling out an arena, doing the biggest event that YouTube's ever seen. Yeah. Fucking huge. I didn't make the money was the same. I didn't even pick a weight class. We didn't even do it at a, a, a certain weight. Like, all the fuck, everything else, was, I just don't give a shit. It's just like, I just want to do this event and do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And the one yeah. thing I wanted to do that day when, and I spoke to um, Ethan's mum yeah. uh, about this, um, was that I actually did want to go and meet JJ's parents. Oh, really? And I wanted to give them a hug and say, yeah. whoever wins out of this and whatever's been said in the past, etc. you know, um, I want you to realise that yeah. I want to be... Friends, you know yeah. what I mean. Did you get to um, meet them? No, I never got to meet them. So, shook, his mum shook, you know. shook my hand afterwards in the yeah, ring, and Deji no. gave me a hug. Yeah, no, that would have been nice. I don't think you do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, like, it's interesting. Well, I know, but that contributes when I say like Deji away from the cameras. I, I mean, I know there were loads of cameras at, at that point, but like, gave me a hug after he lost his last his his fight against Jake Paul backstage. Me and him were talking for a, a while about like things and whatnot, I was like, giving him support. And it's like, away from, like, I don't know, when it's just me and him in real life, it's like, I don't, I don't know, different. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah. entertainment, but then it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah but then he gets onto a camera and we just chat shit. I don't know, yeah. so do I. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, mean, I, think, I think that situation, I do think the pair of you are as bad as each other. <laughs> little bitches, like, mate. Yeah, yeah, you just like egg each other on, I swear. Yeah, yeah dodgy. <laughs> but then, but, yeah. I want to talk about, like, obviously, you deciding to do this career. What well, one? Uh, well, like, YouTube and whatever. Yeah. If it did fail, obviously you were behind Joe the whole way. At what point do you say to a child, mm. this isn't working? Oh, that was it, really. Um, it was really hard because, um, obviously, YouTube was a lot better paid in those days. No, they weren't. Well, you did get no, a... No, we weren't. But you got more from, money per from, view. Yeah, from no, we don't. YouTube. No, no, no Ruff. in those days. No. Didn't no, you? no, no, incorrect. No, what, what, um, what now... What went down then? What went down? As in, as in what? <laughs> Mum, the year I did the boxing fight, I didn't do any work. I didn't do any videos. No, no, no. But when you were doing Kitty and all those ones and all yeah. the Ronaldo and it, I mean, what, that's on 20 million views plus and whatever. Yeah, though that you earns less than earn... what videos can earn now. Oh, really? Yeah, in fairness, Ronaldo, was... that... No, no, Mum, Mum, what, what probably changed is like I was doing... No, I, mate, I don't even talk about my earnings. I earn more now than I earn then. <laughs> Yes, I know you do, but I think... That, what <laughs> yes, I'm, I know you do. <laughs> no, what, what are you getting about? What I'm trying to say is that, you know, Luke's asked me a question about at what point would I have said to you, don't, you know, this is not okay. worth pursuing. Yeah. And I think while you were doing those videos, you were earning a living. And so, right. therefore, while you were earning a living, that was okay. You because was, it could be well, any at job. First, at first, when I was still at college, I was earning about £1,000 a month from yeah. YouTube videos. Which so was more than anyone else at college was well, Yeah, so that was when yeah. I was 17 or 18. Yeah, so that's I, a lot So that's money. when I was like, yeah, so that's when I was like, mum, there's potential here. I'm earning, if I was to go to, because you were trying to get me at 16 to go and get a normal job. Yeah. Like you were saying, getting, I was like, no, 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 let me do this YouTube thing. Let me do it. Because I'm earning a £1,000 a month and it's going to go up. It's going to go up. Trust. And then yeah. I remember when it got, one point I got £10,000 a month. And it was like, look, da, 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 da. But like, um, at what point, so you're saying financial reasons would be what govern whether I, whether it's success or not, whether it's a success or not. Not if I'm making a fool of myself being a fuck a weird. No, no, uh, but, I don't know, do you know what I mean? the point is there is that, that if you are to pursue it as a career, right. it has to be financially right, sustainable. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, like that, because that is the, the be all and end all of any career. I don't yeah, think yeah, anyone yeah. really wants to go and work if, yeah. if no. we didn't have to, but we have to for money. No. Uh, so it's, oh, it's, for me, it's the two things. It was the passion. Mm. As soon as you, your passion went, mm. I then did have, I think we did have conversations about, well, you know, maybe now is the time you need to go and get a, 
a normal job. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, and because, uh, we had those conversations, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. lack um, of passion also came at a bad time because there was, I mean, we've spoken about it before where you, you didn't have much money. Well, yeah, because oh, after gosh, cause yeah. I didn't the, the year of the boxing fight didn't Absolutely. earn didn't earn anything because I was training. Obviously, didn't earn anything from the boxing fight, which nice. we thought we would get money mm. from. So lots of outgoings, and then um, tax bills, Be- very, very, very big tax bills. Yeah. Took, Park figures. Well, how many strong five, six figures? Yeah. Yeah, strong, and it was just like right, all that money gone. I'm now left with nothing. So it's like I've got no passion for videos. I'm now having to take brand deals for the sake of it, just just to accumulate money again. And it's just like, I've got no idea of what I want to do. Mum, what do I do? Yeah. I've absolutely <laughs> effed it. And, and then that was yeah. obviously mum saying, look, look well, you need to look at getting a real job. Are you you even sp- spoke about like going and getting like the local supermarket. Yeah. Like being deadly serious. Really? Yeah. Oh, mate, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> well, I can't. <laughs> I, like, not that no disrespect, but it's just like, it would, that's the issue now. I can't go and get a normal job because it would cause where people would recognise and take the piss. Yeah. There would Do you know be what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah. too many. Too <laughs> many things. I'm not going to get Joe to see that. But also, Joe did his work experience in the uh, uh, leisure centre, was it? Yeah, mate. I don't know. That's um, about the van again, the, are we? Oh, the no, van. I wonder that was the vans. Yeah, but the, he, he had a leisure leisure. Yeah, so I also did work cleaning the cleaning the drains. I was cleaning the drains, and I was like, "Look, but things like that is what almost motivated me. Like, I want to do something that I'm passionate about. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm having to put myself through something I don't want to do in order to get money." Yeah. So, and that's the point at which I found myself doing something I don't want to do, and and that's what's mental because a lot of people will go, "YouTube is the ideal job. It's like an actual, an actual dream." So I'm like sitting here, like, "How am I like feeling like this?" that I did about cleaning drains, about being a YouTuber and doing what my dream was. Mm. It's like, how, how can this work? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think the ironic thing is also is the fact that you need to, to sort of tell your viewers the, that you had that struggle over what people consider to be a dream job. Oh, yeah. And the fact that you were thinking, maybe this isn't for me. And, and yeah, it doesn't matter what you choose to do in life. You know, there are always fours and against is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And, and that's interesting when you're striving and working so hard, particularly when you're at uni mm. or you're trying to go up the career ladder to realise that these struggles happen along the way. Well, and this is the thing. And people always, they boil it down simply to money. So people would look at it and be like, well, how can you be struggling? You're earning, you know, five figures a month. Mm. Like There can't be any struggle there. But like, they're... There's so much more to it than money. I know we say, yeah. like, to have a, a sensible career, you do need to be able to be financially stable. Mm. But you you have yeah. to be happy as well Absolutely. in everything that you do. Well, believe it or not, Joe is actually a very sensitive soul. And, um, <laughs> yes, he is. And, and I think probably that's why he gets on with uh, girls so much. Because he has girls, a very girl female a female side to him, you know, that's we, very sensitive. Feminine. And under- Feminine side. You're raised by females. Well, yeah. But you have a feminine side to you that's very sensitive to other people's <laughs> emotions. And I think that is a good thing. But that has held you back also. Held me back? Well, not held you back, but that's... I can't be as cutthroat as I make out I am. Yeah. Because I actually am a bit too sensitive. Yeah. Well, because a lot of people would have so, switched so, off but... and just like been like, oh, well, this is, this is raking it in for me. I'm just going to yeah. like churn out shit and just... Yeah, you 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 had um, you wanted to um, always be a good self achiever. I think. That's well, it. yeah, but overall, anyway. you know, <laughs> I think. But like, fast forward into now, like obviously, I'm currently you know working with different music producers Brilliant. like that are you know big names in the charts. Like, and we're looking to basically make a big push. Like, I've been talking to um, Polydor Music Label, um, and. Like that is looking like a very promising thing out of nowhere. And something that I want to ask you about is you, when you speak about this struggle, okay, that mm. can happen in no matter what you do, like if there's, there's, you can't get away from having these struggles and downfalls and whatever. I found that a lot of time when you think that the hard work you're putting in at this specific point is going to pay off here. So I, I'm putting in all this work, and it's going to pay off by me, the videos, for example, going down well and et cetera, et cetera. 
But the way this music producing label opportunity has come around mm. is almost like I'm getting rewarded with that coming out of nowhere from the hard work that I did back then. But Absolutely. I didn't even realise no. that that hard work was actually for this. I thought it was for, for that, but it's actually for this thing that has come after. Yeah, but I think you'll find, uh, and I can talk from experience yeah. now, having had a life and all my working careers and things, yeah. there are things that you'll do when you're 18 yeah. which will come to fruition when you're 56. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So everything that you do, you are doing for a reason. You may not realise at that time that you're doing it, uh. but it will happen. And so that is why you should put your all into everything, you know, yeah. uh, from my perspective. And, you know, enjoy. Enjoy everything you're doing. You know, but these, these little things that are happening now are coming out of the hard work that you put in previously. I mean, when you think of the marketing and self-marketing and self-management that you've done in getting where you are, well, you know, other people have teams of people doing that. You have managed to pick up, you and your fellow YouTubers have managed to pick up millions and millions of people to following you. And, you know, that is a, a huge achievement. Mm. Huge achievement. Have you ever been attempted to do it yourself? No. Because there are some mums of YouTubers like Morgs, his yeah. two well, parents, Thog Dad. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, mum, there are parents that so obviously, you know, like you were involved in my videos, yeah, yeah, then yeah. made their own channel. Yeah. And they, they like, did almost like family stuff. Morgs' mum takes the piss, as in the amount of the following she's got and probably like the, five the, million subscribers. Like the money still? she's making off like this. This sort of family element of YouTube. Yeah. Oh, how Doing fantastic. a diss track on her son, didn't she? <laughs> they oh, both they, did diss tracks on each other. <laughs> they've done some of the most ridiculous stuff on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. But well, it's so that never tempted you. Uh, no, no. I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I... Could you even imagine it? No. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. <laughs> I couldn't imagine it. I mean, I'd like to... I think we've had things where... Even brands have sort of said, bring your mum along. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like do, you, do you want your mum, like, as in, we want your mum to, to be involved in part of the brand deal. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I've yeah. always thought, mm, I don't know. I don't know whether that would be. charge extra for that. <laughs> well, that's what, that's, that's instantly what Phil says, isn't it? Like, yeah, you'll like, get a fee for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but, but I'd never get the money. It'd always go to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> You've been Dodging. robbing off your mum. <laughs> Not at all, yeah. but <laughs> wait, <laughs> should we bring in some of the um, viewers' questions? <coughs> I've, I'm, I'm going to let you, you take the questions, but I obviously put out a story yesterday. Yeah. A lot of them, Jenny, I'm really sorry. They're all Link. terrible questions, yeah, which I'm not going to read Yeah, because they just want to see me embarrassed, don't they? Well, oh, no, I don't know. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, and Joe, I mean, they're, they're, they're derogatory. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. That's what they are. Okay. I don't mind. I mean, honestly, if you want to throw some in, I will be as honest and as candid as you <laughs> want me to be. Um, I, don't, I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind. Hi. I, hang on a moment. If I can do a video about vibrators or whatever happened all those years ago, <laughs> then, you know, go for it. That is true. It's not going to get worse than that, I don't think. Hi, Joe, Luke and Joe's mum. Hi. How did you end up finding Joe's plastic doll under his bed? Oh, God. <laughs> also, what was it like finding your iPad with Joe's <laughs> website still open? Right, okay. Well, finding the doll under the bed was quite weird because, again, I think I was actually doing the housework. <laughs> but that was when he lived in another place, of course. Uh, I think the worst thing also was finding... Um, Dressing up clothes, not Dressing for Joe, up. but for whichever girlfriend he was with at the time. There was a little nurse's thing, <laughs> or a, you know, a little teacher's thing or something, whatever. And that was a bit weird because you sort of think, why have you got this under the bed, you know? But um, What goes through your head as a mum when you pick that up? Do you like, you know, what are you thinking? Because obviously the last thing you want to do is have that image in your head of Joe. Can I be brutally honest oh, with yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, please, please. No, no, no. From a mum's perspective, you want your son to be um, and show all these traits of being, you know, a very he-man and a very... He-man? Well, you know, very alpha, put it that way. Oh, well, is this not a little bit like gender 
Dodgy. Well, no. Well, let him out. And you want you want that because, you know, that's a good thing. You know, he's going to eventually obviously settle down, find a wife and have a family. And, you know, that's, that would be good. But you used to think that but, I was gay, Mum. <laughs> yeah, hang on a moment. <laughs> but, you know, when you start finding these things, you know, Durex is in the drawer and um, or, you know, other things and whatever. Yeah, it's a little bit of a... But is it? Is it? I, I get your point about the 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 he man comment. Is that more? It's like okay, I know he's on a like if if they're finding their sexuality and you're finding all these things, you're like right, he's on the right path. As in, he's you know getting what? out there exploring. Yeah, like it must be reassuring because you think you know of people that are there are people our age that are virgins. Yeah, and I feel like as a parent, I would be worried about a child that maybe isn't getting out there and exploring, like but like whatever gender they're going for, I would be worried if they weren't sexually active or sexually yeah. promiscuous. And Yeah, I think from a parent's perspective is that you just want your child or children to be safe. And that is what I would consider to be the best thing. So I always looked after my kids and tried to give them the space to experiment with whatever they wanted to do within the family what environment. What do you think? Because there are parents that would find that stuff and actually get livid and tell them off and yeah. be like, you are bad, you're naughty, this is disgraceful and disgusting. But are you saying you're promoting the idea of expressing... I'm not promoting anything. What? No, but encourage... Like, say <laughs> it's quality. Saying, what, like, I'm quite saying, quite <laughs> what I'm saying is that every one of us needs to have a safe space to be themselves. And yeah. uh, if that means that the first time you have alcohol... You go and have it on a park bench, or you have it maybe with a park friend. Bench. With a friend in your bedroom. I'm not sure. Or you know what? What would be the best place? I mean, at least if you were having a drink within my company, and you had too much, I would be able to look after you. Whereas if you're down on the seafront and you can't walk and you're being ill, you know yeah, who's looking what, after you is then? That thing okay, like your parents. Allowing you to do all these things, but sort of with that supervision is much more reassuring to the parent. It's reassuring to the parent, whether that actually happens or I'm not promoting that. I'm not mm -hmm. saying go and do that. But what I'm saying is, from my perspective, it was always more comforting to know that that you and Amy were looked after. But looked after, uh, wait a minute, so... so Having a sex doll under the bed and being <laughs> looked after, like, what was that? Because I didn't actually use it. Nah, because I, I got you it. You must I, have used it. Nah, 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 I... Do, I I did get it, <laughs> but I did, I, it wasn't, no, because it made me realise I, I, I wanted to experience the real thing, so I just lobbed it under the bed. <laughs> no, no, wait, I, wait, but you weren't, were you a virgin? when you? Yeah, had yeah, it? yeah, massive one. I, but I, that's the thing, I was too scared, mate. I was too scared. Like, I'd say to you, I was like, mum, I'd get into the situation, I don't know what to do, I'm just terrified. Mate, because I'm also not going to lie, because you two talk about that sort of stuff. Yeah. These, like, this might seem really weird to some people that Joe is sitting down with his mum. Oh, yeah, no, we're very, like, As a family, they're like, very, everyone's just open. It's, it's, it makes it easier. I got my hair cut earlier, and I was speaking to Tommy, and I was like, I don't even think it's going to be that weird, because, like, you two have these strange conversations. Well, it's just like, <laughs> anyway. no, 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 it's what I'd say, like, it's not dodgy. It's more of just like, look, as a family, if you're able to be, the more people that you feel comfortable talking about struggles and things, what, no matter what it is about, the actual easier your life is. So it's like people going, oh, you're so weird, you're so weird. It's like, mate, like, if you were able to actually talk in that way, maybe it actually might be reassuring and, and, and useful rather than as yeah. weird as you maybe think think it is. Because, I, I mean, like, look, what I mostly have been brought up by by females like you say so it's like i need to ask someone or speak have feel someone to speak to yeah yeah i don't know no no i know what you mean whereas like i have an older brother so maybe if i ever needed that conversation i yeah. could i could speak to him but you sort of had you didn't have that so you yeah. had to rely on your your mum yeah but, uh, I mean, yeah oh it's just one of those things we've always been very open i've was always open with my mum as did, well. Did you bring the doll up when you? No, what? Like, no, no. But as in, did with me? No, no, no. Did <laughs> you? Did you say to Joe like I saw what was under your bed? Oh, she was like, yeah. it was made just a passing <laughs> jokey comment, like, oh, and the thing that's under your bed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, 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 did. And with regard to the iPad thing. Oh yeah, the yeah, iPad the thing. The iPad thing. Well, that just I think most mums have found that, haven't they? Yeah, but I went down a slippery slope. What? Which slightly? Which... You got very desensitized to it. Didn't yeah. You? 
but this is I don't mean, you think as a, as, a, as a parent maybe uh, you should say no you don't use pornography well yeah <laughs> yeah I mean it's, it's a bit of a difficult one from there the point is. of view that most males do use por- pornography in some way I think what I got upset about if I'm brutally honest oh, no. with you is the fact of seeing when I looked at, the, at some of the pictures that most of the girls are um, enhanced, shall we say. What do you mean enhanced? Oh. That, I like a bit of realism. Oh, what, no, did they have like the fake... No, 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 but that's just the adverts, mate, on the side. Do you know, like, go, go, come to fuck yeah, book. But, no, no, no. Girl, no, but I nine inches by taking yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I, I think... Uh, Nothing if, was enhanced. If you, were, if you were looking at someone that is naturally No, but that's beautiful. what I go for. Um, no, but... What are you on about? Yeah, but maybe not when you're watching porn. No, no, yeah, it's always been the case. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it has. Dead silent. Oh, this is awful. Oh, good. Um, no, but is there anything that could have come up on that screen that would have made you worried? Worried? Yeah, yeah. Or like, like. Yeah, I wouldn't have fancied animals or children. <laughs> animals, or children. children. <laughs> Mum, that would have put me off a bit. But um, yeah, I don't know. Me neither. <laughs> Anyways, Ra, you got any questions or should I whip out another one no, of mine? No, you got to remember one thing. I've got to say, Go in on, the mum. 1960s, if you watched a porn film, all yeah. you got was a Swedish girl with a kerchief <laughs> on. And that was it. So, uh, yeah, they have changed a bit over time. Mental. A, a lot uh, more accessible now as well. You wouldn't, I mean, uh, um, so you probably didn't have a collection, but the, the thing used to be you'd have like a collection of whatever, like hidden under your bed somewhere. Yeah, no, we didn't have a collection, did we? I think Theo actually gave Joe a, no, a Jordan what? card what? at one point in his life what? when he was Joe about or Katie, Katie Price. Price. Yeah, and it, it, you opened it and it said "Come on, big boy" or something, and you were appalled by it. Really? So well, um, no, no, no. It's because it was like my stepdad giving me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. You have a very different relationship uh, <clears throat> with your stepdad, didn't you? Have the relationship with your mum that maybe most people have with their dad? Yeah. I think that's well, that's because true. like you see, ain't got a dad. <laughs> well, but, yeah, but 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 Phil's been like a very good father figure yeah. to you. Well, yeah, but it's in like not actual like actual dads. Not not as in conversations, open conversations. But in yeah, no. yeah, no, that's yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to bring <laughs> didn't want to bring the mood down or anything. But anyways, oi! So I actually only had that question. I didn't favourite the other ones, so we're gonna have to go to your ones from Instagram. I'll go through Instagram. I'll, oh, you'll go through them. Oh no, wait! I took photos. Wait, hold up, everyone. That's what I did. I didn't favourite them. I took photos of them. Right, so bear with me. Right, they're coming up now. Now, guys, we have another sponsorship message, and this time, who's it from, Luke? Beer fifty two. Now, beer fifty two. Great community. I'd actually call them. Um, what you can get every month is a case of beers that have been like basically hand-selected from all over the world. Whoa. So, yeah, no, it's unbelievable. They actually had one called Buxton Beer in Whoa. the last week we did. So, you know, you can actually get smashed on Buxton. Yay. I believe that one was um, from Belgium. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a collection of all these like craft beers. Yeah. And Sounds you get good. a different lot each month. So mm. it saves you from just getting the normal cans of Carling good, or Stella. Good to share yeah. with friends in the garden. 100%. Now, we are getting you eight Free beers. Oh, that's right. A case of eight. All you've got to do is cover postage, which is five ninety five. But what's that like? One beer in a pub. And also, I'm not going to lie. Right, we got sent a crate each. They're just normal crates that you receive. I got a golden ticket in mine. Shut up. So wow. I get. I'm not sure if everyone else gets these, but they must put them in. Yeah. Some of them. So I get a free crate. I don't even have to pay delivery for my next one. Oh my lord! Brilliant. So you could get the golden ticket. I mean, if that is in spontaneously random orders, uh, why not? But you also get a magazine, a snack, and oh my god, you can even get an alcohol-free option. So really? if, yeah, select that. So if you're pregnant or you don't like, you know, don't like alcohol, um, then yeah, you can get that. All you got to do is pay the five ninety-five postage. But the all-important thing is you must go to www.beer52.com slash waffling that's on screen now for your free case so enjoy beer 52 we love you guys and let's get on with the show Based okay so on. this what's an embarrassing story of joe from his childhood now one actually came to mind but i don't know what what you're gonna say oh my god i was gonna say when i used to wee behind the back of the sofa yeah, yeah, yeah we got questions about that, that as well i used god. to do it i, I used to, mate it used to excite me and how old what? were you no 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 not in a dodgy <laughs> way i used to feel really like naughty 
Just because it is quite no, a naughty no, no, thing no, to no. do. Not dodgy, not do- no, 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 no. Not in like a sexual way, I was like I just, five. I, I just think you were rebelling about the no. carpet. The carpet no, no, no. needed changing and that was it. <laughs> but is there anything else like dodgy from my childhood? I mean, I don't even dodgy know. from your childhood? Yeah, um, like... What was Joe... Like, what did you think of, of Joe, obviously? We spoke about last week back in like the year seven sort of period where he'd go around calling himself the Wellard and everything. Oh, oh. year seven. I, like, did you, I, well, because I got bullied at Denton, didn't I? Yeah. But was there ever a period where, because most parents must have this, I'm sure, where you thought, oh, he's actually going for a phase where he's a bit of a cock. That's been most of my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when? Uh, Joe has always been, ever since he was younger... A dickhead. <laughs> a dickhead. Yeah, no, he's always been... Um, Gosh, he, you know, how can I say? If Joe comes into the room, he has the attention on him. Everything stops for Joe. Um, and basically, that <laughs> still happens now. If Joe I'm comes round... attention-seeking massive little wanker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Joe comes round, then everything, all the attention is on him. And I think, if anything, that uh, gets to Amy a bit sometimes. Amy's my sister. Yeah. What, um, so there's conflict? No, nah, I don't think so, not mate. Con- I don't know. Nah. Not conflict, but it's just the fact that Joe, Joe's uh, career and life, etc. Yeah, is, that, that doesn't help. That is probably... That... I mean, if you think poor old Amy, she's lived in the shadow of Joe, you know, from a very early age. Yeah. And um, yeah, even because at... Joe, you know, he also, you know, was scouted for Brighton and Hove and... We went and did all that with him, um, you know. So that was from the age of eleven, twelve, yeah. age. But like, but what we're saying here is that embarrassing story. So, but embarrassing like, story. Do you know what I mean? So there's nothing embarrassing really, because uh, like a lot, a lot of people were asking about that. I'm sure there are, but I can't really remember. Like, because the other questions are things like, was Joe always a little bitch? <laughs> You've obviously said yes. <laughs> yeah, and this is no, a, this is the thing. Like a lot of the questions I got there. There's a, a lot of use of the word flaps and... Flap? Oh, what, is in, like, really horrible, like... Really, really horrible sort of questions that are... What, rather than, like, appropriate sort of, like, in, 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 insightful... Not inc- oh, incestual. <laughs> insightful. Not incestual. No, insightful sort of, like, questions. Because that's the thing, like, obviously what? we ask people to send in these things and it always comes out. Like, they always go to that sort of thing. Why? Yeah, I Why? like because I feel like we haven't set that tone. I think we talk about things, a lot of sexual things, but we do always try and keep it nice, and they're always based and pleasant. Off, yeah, they are based off serious things, and a lot of these are just well, what, like like think about what you send. Yeah, it's actually quite horrible. Most well, people can hide behind their phone, isn't it? But I mean, one here goes like, how do you deal with hate and people oh, yeah. hating on your son? Yeah, have it's you horrible. ever got any hate from people? Um, I'm lucky, actually. You guys have always been really good to me. Um, and thank you. I appreciate. I don't know where I'm looking at, but thank mm, you. I camera. really, Your camera's really, that top one. really, really appreciate all that you've ever done for me. And I've even had uh, people direct message me and we've had conversations off of the back of Joe's, um, you know, sort of life, really. So, it's, yeah, it's been good. But hate, when... He was doing YouTube, first of all, and you used to get lots and lots of hate. It was quite hard to read. And I still now, whatever you do, I still look at the comments. Um, And I don't know if anybody notices, but I do like some of them as well. So, you know, if you get an I'm Jenny Harris, then that's me. Um, Plug in the Insta. Plug in the Insta. Should we put it up? Yeah, Tom, (laughs) put it at I'm Jenny Harris. Yeah, even I've got six and a half thousand followers. But anyway... um, (laughs) <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, it is horrible when. But but Joe taught me to be quite honest because I used to say to him, "Don't you get upset?" And he'd say, "Well, you'd say that comes. That's part of it. Game's the game. That's part." But of no, it. but that's the thing. Like I would start getting upset when I actually agreed with them. That's what it would be for me. So yeah. people just chatting shit. I'm like, "You're jealous, mate. You're a little fucking loser that's embarrassed his own <laughs> life." Yeah, yeah. Like, I'd just be like, no, I see what it's saying about them rather than like what it says about me. And that's the thing, like happy people don't write hate because they're not hateful beings if no. you're happy with who you are. So that's how I'd see it. It's when like the comments that would get to me is like, oh, oh, your videos aren't as good as they used to be. Like, I really like you, Joe. Like, you're a great guy, well, but a bit shit now. Because I, I, when I started seeing that, that's the sort of stuff. Because we got one 
actually talking about waffling the other yeah. day and you screenshotted it and sent it to me and you're like, has he hit the nail on the head here? Yeah. Which, what I mean, you can read it out if you have it. Yeah, so we got we got a comment from a waffling mafia member regarding the actual show. Um, and I'll just quickly, like, read it out for a bit. Uh, it goes, when waffling first happened, I loved it. It felt uh, authentic. But as the episodes have progressed, I felt less and less connected to the videos and you boys personally. I think the setup of uploading every week, no matter what, could be possibly causing this. Also, maybe because it looks a little more professional, like the setup looks professional, like looks it actually looks nice. Looks nice and actually like, <laughs> like quality. Um, now, nah, but basically, he goes, "I used to love how spontaneous and off the cuff videos were." Another possibility could be that I've grown up and Joe somehow feels a little immature now. <laughs> now, I definitely like slash relate to Luke the most on the podcast, as I feel he's just being himself and not trying to act playful for the cameras. I've definitely felt myself tuning out of the last few episodes, whereas the pod first, whereas when the f uh, pod first started, I would wait up for the videos to go live. So basically, I'm just inauthentic, pretending to be someone I'm not, and just, uh, like, but immature. But isn't, isn't that, as we all grow up and change, we develop and grow, and our ideas and, and interests grow, and how you perceive people... Um, changes as well. well so yeah, like so what you thought was funny when you were 17 isn't going to be what at the same at 27. Yeah. Waffling, even Waffling is two years old now. Yeah. yeah. And it's a very different show to where it was at the beginning. Where yeah. But I think that's what's so special about YouTube in itself is the fact that you can look at um, videos from every walk of life and see pe how people have grown and how they've moved forward and how life and social life in particular has affected them and that's exactly the same with you guys you know? yeah but as in like i i guess what the, the bit i focused on there is like i used to when i was like oh no i only want to do waffling when we're all like in the mood for it but financially we weren't able to get ad reads because they want to buy like 15 episodes in a row sure yeah. and like so as a business, it couldn't operate like that. Yeah. However, I was like, we get the best stuff when we do that. Yeah. So it's like, do we have to do it week in, week out? Some weeks we're up for, some weeks we're not. Yeah. So it's sort of like, you. there's always yin and yang, positive and Absolutely. negative for everything. If you want to, and often when you want to make, but, but, make money, the, the, the quality or the, I don't know, there has to be something that, that it's gives. It's the trade-off, isn't it? It's yeah. the trade-offs between whatever you're going to do. Which, I mean, we... we we are making changes to next season. I mean, next season, yeah, we're going to get more and more guests on. I think that's what's what's necessary as well. Like, even probably having you on here, having my mum's point of view, like, and, and the dynamic you bring, like, it's probably been different. It's probably, like, people are probably watching right now and listening. It's refreshing. And going, oh, my God, this has been so cool. It's like they, they would have taken things that we don't even realise. And I think that's, that's the cool thing. That's where having different guests on for future episodes is going to be good. The only thing is where we live down here in Eastbourne, a London-based studio like Jackmate is what because is more useful, maybe. Well, not that I want to, you know, I don't want to shit on you being here, but Jackmate was going to be the fill-in. Yeah, it was going to be this week, but we're but too far away. Yeah, it's like an eight-hour round trip for him, so it just it yeah. doesn't make sense, but we are very grateful that you're here. No, I no, think, no, no. Yeah. I think what would I we I think it's done? about time I made an appearance after no, all I think these so. years you, anyway. You know what? There was a lot of calls <laughs> for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm no, no, I, totally. No, now, something nice. that actually someone's asking about is, you know, the Ouija board video that we did? Uh -huh. Yeah. So back in the day, Tom overlay this one. Basically, me and mum and the other uh, family members were Amy, Phil and Elliot and yeah. then me. Um, we went to a haunted manor house down the road and did like a social, a social, a ghost sort of experiment. Now, what actually ended up happening, obviously we tried to get the Ouija board to work. It didn't work for like the first half an hour. Then it really did start to work. Yeah. The fire alarm was set off by itself yeah. and then it spelled out fire, leave, go. And what obviously people naturally, because it's YouTube, go, oh, fake. It wasn't. Oh, they're putting it on. No. And that's why, obviously, I got my family involved. And yeah. people are asking, like, how was that for you? Did you move your hand? No. Did you do it? <laughs> no, none of us moved it. Honestly, none of us moved it. It was purely spontaneous. And the alarm going off, well, yeah. that we had nothing to do with that. Mm. And that was as it happened. And that night, you could feel that there was something not... Somebody didn't want us to be there. But, is that, but that's the thing, when people say that, I'm like, oh, you're just scared. Like, how, how can you yeah, feel that but, something but, doesn't but, want you to be do, there? But you do, you can feel, you can feel it. But, but um, here's the thing as well, you talk about the Ouija board, mm. because we went back to, it was Michelin Priory where you did yeah. it the yeah. first time. And we went back there, 
and there was a new host. We, we, we wait, wait, was that uh, was that us three? Yeah, when we went back there, yeah. and we tried the Ouija board, and it didn't, there was nothing. Well, was well it was very evident that someone was pressing. Mate, it. so like, like basically, yeah, we went back there, and the new lady that worked, she yeah. blatantly moved it because it wasn't working, and then she just. So blatantly, because we were trying it, it, the three of us. Then she was like, "Let me join yeah. it." And all of a sudden, it was like, whoa, whoa. "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah." It was place. just and and but that and that instantly killed the whole vibe. But yeah. like, we went back there, yeah, and it didn't work. But that was the the last time the Ouija board worked for us, and yeah. I think that was that was an interesting thing. But it was. Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah. Have you ever had any other experiences? Uh, yeah, I've had. When I was a child, I used to have someone hit my bed. What? Yeah. Wait, was that in, in Station Road? Mm. Was your room my room? Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Because so I've had someone grab my foot in that room. Yeah. I thought it was mine. That's what they used to shut do. The fu- shut they up. They grab your foot or hit the bed near your feet. Yeah. And Amy, <laughs> and Amy in You're that room, uh, Amy in the box room in Station Road um, used to hear children and well, hear them playing. Terrifying. Yeah. But then Amy also, when she was a child, she could see people's auras. She used to see colours around them. Yeah. She used to warn me at the age of three or four not to go near people because there was brown around them. Really? Yeah. Oh, mental, isn't it? Weird. And then... um, There are people that are like that, though. Me and Theo were... Well, apparently it's something as a child you've got, but you lose... As you grow up. uh, We were speaking to... And this this person must have retained it because she was a, a mother... And she was like, "Oh yeah, like I can see auras around people. Like I can, I can tell whether they're good or bad, bad people. Yeah. I see the colours coming off them." And well, do you do you guys let us know in the comments? Like, mm. have you heard any about this? Because obviously the the flashes that I had in this house that one week. Obviously, I stayed at my on my mum's sofa for like the entire <laughs> like after that week because I was too scared to <laughs> live in the house. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> mum didn't no, believe <laughs> mum didn't believe me, and I was like so what frustrated. About the footage when you saw that, footage? yeah, it was a bit hard not to believe it. When yeah. you saw Tom the overlay the footage right now, yeah. Tom overlay the footage. Um, it was it was seeing those lights in different random places where you would never. We kept on thinking there's got to be something electrical. It's got to be yeah, because at some point this nothing... did flash. But it's the way I had in my room the, the flashes. And obviously in that waffling episode when I... You said something two, was going Two on. episodes ago, there was flashes up there and you you boys were like, where, where, where? We've had multiple cars go out by outdoors. The bloody blinds are down now. It's hot, not happening now. Yeah. I, 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 no, but I, we, had, we got a video sent from that episode saying there was actually a flash in the top corner. Yeah. Like people, my mom, people this, said they saw really? it. Really? But yeah. it's, it's weird in that sense. And we've had a lot of people email in saying, oh, I keep getting the blue flashes. I keep getting white flashes. I keep getting, like, like other people are, are experiencing it. And I'm like, is it, like, people are saying it's it's your guardian angel or your your spirit guide saying, like, I'm here or okay. something like that. And it's, oh, it's all just mental. And I'm like, how far can that, does that go? Is there another plane of beings or energy on this <laughs> earth that we can't see but is always here? What do you think is more likely to exist? This goes to both of you. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, go. Aliens or ghosts? <laughs> ghosts. Ghosts over aliens. Well, because they're both real, mate. They are both 100% real, bro. Because <laughs> you're terrified of aliens. That's well, what you're really terrified I'm only terrified. So I, 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 because they're real. Because they, they exist. 100% other life. Hun- without, without question. It's hard to believe that we're alone in the universe. Well, because it's so huge. Yeah. It I, is hard to believe. But I mean, at what point... They contact us. So I'm well, have they already? Sure. Do you believe, buddy, in aliens? For, sh- for sure. You don't like, believe in ghosts, even after what we've experienced. Uh, I believe in, like, definitely that there's some, so, there are some unexplainable energies. things that happen. Yeah. It's, it's the energies, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's energy. It's not necessarily ghosts like, ooh, yeah. but. Yeah, yeah, I'm not expecting, like, Casper to come through the door yeah. or anything, but. But there are unexplainable things. But I would also like more proof. I still yeah. said, like, I think it would be sick if we could go to like some of these most haunted locations in the world. And actually, I want something to shit me up. <laughs> that's what I want. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we could like, as in that's that's where I'm. I ideally would be the next step. I think like YouTube wise, like I mean, I've got like this video idea that I've got that I'm 100 percent not mentioning to anyone in case mm-hmm. they steal the idea, but. Like a video like you just explained, going going to an actual legitimate haunted crazy place and doing an absolute top of the range investigation yeah. 
that would excite me. This other video idea that I've got that laugh oh, face, mate, it's gonna be ridiculous. Well, here's what I want to say. That's gonna be mental. Did that just stop? No, no, no. Um, yeah, that's gonna be mental. And I think on the YouTube front, forget YouTube as a platform, but just making videos. If if some if an idea comes to me that I'm literally like, oh my god, so excited by, I'm just gonna do it. Well, no, because this is what I was gonna say. I feel like you've got the bug for it a little bit. I feel well, like it's back. Well, no, well, only for like, like I say, like not to be a YouTuber, like forget whatever platform. No, no, I'm, but, but I'm like, creating, yeah, creating like videos. making a video. But why do you have to put label on it anyway? That's what I'm saying. Well, that's what I've, I've it's, removed. It's, it's all yeah. I just want to make. Look, you don't want to put labels. Well, on things. Yeah, how I, how I'm looking at it is like I want to make it. If I have an idea and I re and I give that much of a crap about it, that I want to bring it to life. Absolutely, I'm going to do it. Like yeah. as in. I know that's what a lot what a lot of people have said anyway, but um, now that because it's been enough time where there's there's literally nothing, uh, no momentum that I need to cling on to. Like, oh, but you've got this channel with five million subscribers that and this audience, like, mate, like we've we've seen. I could upload now and probably only get like hundred k views because the, a lot of the audience are gone. So it's almost like in my head, I'm starting from nothing. So there's yeah. no pressure. There's no audience, even though there probably is. But in my head, there's there's it's that's from probably scratch. a better way to think. Yeah, of it yeah, yeah. Well. Like we're over the hill now. It's it's you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm not clinging on to that because it's done. It's like I'm now making videos, and if I want to put them, I'll put them on that channel. But um, yeah, Wait, there's I no pressure. I think I'm just going back to the ghost idea because yeah, it's cool. Yeah, if we get a brand that's yeah. willing to well, yeah, send yeah, yeah. us. Oh, that well, that's what good. I want to do. Yeah. Like traveling wise as well. Like as in, I want to. Um, and it may may take to making a few of them, but going to different places, trying different weird, crazy, wacky things. I've got an idea of something I want to do with that. Me and um, girlfriend actually, mm -hmm. we've got we've had the idea of of doing something like that going to different places um, that came off the back of doing the Formula E Monaco trip because that was such like a... Did you film out there? No, but I, I thought, mate, if I, I could have so easily made a thing out of this, uh, bear in mind, COVID did fuck it a little bit with having to... We, we couldn't... Yeah, once we were in the Formula E bubble, we couldn't leave. Like with Premier League matches, once you're in the stadium, I don't know, or once you're at the boxing matches, you have to stay in the bubble. Yeah. You're restricted. But under normal or more normal circumstances, that is so... The opportunities that I find myself in are such sick opportunities to make unique well, piece of content. Because also, you got sent to... Where was that really nice place you went to a couple of years ago in Greece? Mykonos. Yeah, didn't they just? They yeah. just paid. They, like yeah. you didn't have to pay for I anything. I stayed in the the place that Mo Salah stayed in for his holidays. Uh, Twenty five grand for five days, yeah. and they let me just go for free. Because then <laughs> you were like Theo was like, "Wow, that's that looks amazing." Joe was like, "Oh yeah, they just sent me there. Like just message them. I'm sure they'll they'll let you go as well." And he got like offered like five percent discount <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> But he was fuming. That is the game. But yeah, no, no. But like stuff like that, hundred percent. Like yeah, I like. End of the day, I like creating. You've seen when I when I get buzzing about an idea, I don't just think, oh, good idea. I get obsessed. Yeah. And when I start getting obsessed, that's when it's like I know yeah. like I'm actually and I'm sort of obsessed something. with this music thing that we've got coming up. And I've this this other idea that I've got that's can't oh, mate. But the thing is, they've said at first um, this this other idea that I've got. You know, normally with being a YouTuber <laughs> with a following, oh yeah, like you know. I'll uh, basically let me do it for free and I'll fucking plug everyone to you. Because I think when people see this, what I'm doing, they're going to want to try it for themselves. And he's just like, oh, yeah, for, we, we haven't had um, any much fun or much uh, benefit from collaborating with YouTubers. It's actually just cost us money and we haven't got a lot out of it. So I'm just having to pay, which is fine. But he's just... it. When people ask where it, where it is and how, how to get there, like, what? What am I meant to do? Just, like, blur it. Just so, well, no, not, not, not <laughs> let anyone know. Because everyone's going to want to give it a go. Yeah, but it's complicated because then if, if you think it's a really cool experience, you're going to want to just tell people, just be like, yeah. boys, just go and do it. It's like, like, at the end of the day, you're doing it because you want to do it. Yeah, yeah. So, like, a little a little free promotion is not yeah. not the worst thing in the world. Well, what you just saying it earlier, you know, give something, you take something, don't you? Take no, something, you give something. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. well, you do something now and you get Oh, right, right, later, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, later on. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know, you just got to work with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, forget the YouTuber do. privilege bollocks. Yeah. Yeah, because th that's a thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, you get... Not, not just you, I mean... Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTubers get used to just getting... Every, like, oh, you get an experience that involves a brand. Well, having followers is the most, like, lucrative currency now. 
Like, because you can't really buy an, an audience that will listen to you. So it's like, we, if we have that, we can say, look, we'll direct this audience, these followers to you in return, then it's a no-brainer for them. it's the most powerful form of advertising. Like, well, yeah. you think that the adverts come on TV and you, you just pick up your phone, you're like, yeah, fuck watching them. Yeah. But if you're telling someone that is a fan of you... Oh, mate, I like, won't oh. even have to tell them. People will literally <laughs> see this. It's just it's just getting it, the exposure. Like, people will see this and go, oh, if there's a chance to give that a go... That I'm fucking doing it. It's ridiculous. It's, Anyways, it is sick. It is sick. But yeah, you got any got any questions? I reckon I we give it. I got. I got. I got. I got one that I actually Go on. thought of. Go on then, hum. Now, obviously, sorry, um, girlfriend, if you're listening, but yeah. you, you've had a few slag phases. Slag phases. <laughs> you know, you can back me up here, Jenny. <laughs> you've gone through phases where you've gone through girls. <laughs> to put it in its most basic form. Mm-hmm. How does that make me feel? <laughs> yeah, knowing knowing that because here's the thing, like you know, there's being sexually active and then there's being sexually active. Yeah. How does it? How did it make you feel? Like comparing Joe now, girlfriend Joe, to slag Joe. Like, how does it make you feel knowing that sort of that behavior is going on? Not that it's wrong by any means. But you know, like when you see your son, maybe yeah, racking up the numbers. No, I haven't liked it, Luke. I've got to be honest with you. Um, I haven't liked it at all, have I? You know, I haven't. So I, I think, from that perspective, my heart is always with the girl, and I just, yeah, as you much what, as so much. Making as out that it was just all me, my decision. No, it's no, a two no, way no, street. no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so no, feel no. for the girl. <laughs> <laughs> what poor girl? <laughs> No, but I think else? this is this is a generational thing again. I mean, you know, in my day, forgive Mom, me. In the sixties, there were orgies going no, on all the time. Absolutely, when but you were I born, so ta- yeah. But I was on the tail end, how also. So how you were born? <laughs> that you didn't <laughs> sleep orgy. with a girl or have a sexual relationship until you married, and you know that's how we were brought up. I'm not saying that that happened because obviously we're all human, but at the end of the day, when you then see that. That being misused or abused, whether it's consented on both sides, very it's consensual, hundred yeah. percent consensual. <laughs> whether not, not up for discussion, mate. My view, my view is is that I always compare it to a Christmas present or a birthday present. What? Okay? Oh yeah, you want it wrapped? You would not want your Christmas or birthday present given to you unwrapped, would you? Yeah, but what? What? Sorry, you meant okay. to just dry hump them. No, I just think there's plenty of things that you can do that doesn't mean I think you why, have to go the whole hog. But why all the limit time? yourself? No, not all the time. But as in, like, why limit yourself? Actually, no, I do get it. I do. I know it is dodgy. Now it's awful. Now it's amazing. I don't know. But at the end of the day, one thing I've noticed since sort of leaving that lifestyle behind, now that I'm with my girlfriend, is I'm very much more now on it with life. Back eating clean games. I am finally cutting weight. Those calling me a fatty. I've been cutting fat. 2kg two kg down. I'm on making uh, the music. I'm on. I'm at a photo shoot all the time. I'm not staying up till like 5am and just mm-hmm. being a waste man. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like We were practicing the DJ and stuff. Obviously, when me and Elliot were doing the parties and whatnot, and it was great, but I'm much more like, as a, as a human being, healthier on it, like... Boom. It's the same with anything. My view is, is that if you are in control of your life, if you have some sort of discipline within your life, whether it's going to the gym, whether it's eating mm. clean, whether it's, I don't know, putting your all into work or whatever, mm. somehow that then not has a knock-on effect to the other areas in your life. Right, yeah, And you yeah, have yeah. a much more controlled, uh, forward-thinking yeah, life. Yeah, because I'm, I'm really. not going to lie, in those phases you do... And not like personality wise, but you change for sure in how you approach everything. Like you say, you the the weller that I'm more familiar with is like a gym goer, a clean eater, mm. uh, a hard worker. Whereas when you do go through those phases, I feel like you're none of those. You just sort of let yourself go. Well, yeah, it's just but that's the thing. I think uh, uh, I think having those phases though is that actually did me good as long as they were phases as in like having that as a phase like having that because where I have been so squeaky clean in terms of like eat clean work out don't go out but just keep myself to myself and train and train and train like I've, I was like I'm not experiencing I'm not actually just having fun 
I'm like to just let my hair down in a way and just go, you know what? I'm going to be a bit crazy. I'm not going to just be rigid with my lifestyle while, especially with COVID where it was, um, you know, we haven't losing, losing years of our life. Mm. When the restrictions got lifted and we were able to sort of socialize a bit, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And don't get me wrong. I got to a point where it was just like, I mean, it did coincide with obviously meeting my girlfriend, but it was like, this is, I'm just sort of becoming a waste man now. Like I am just becoming a waste man. And I think through being inspired through her, obviously, you know, she's hardworking, she's got ambition, you know, definitely more intelligent than me and all of that. It's like, I think that has actually helped me to go back to my sort of yeah. healthier ways. And it's now not so much, oh, I'm feeling like I'm restricting myself, e like eating clean, but in a bad way where I'm restricting myself of key, you know, I, I would have no carbs and just just eat in a way that way you know ketogenic, which just makes you lose weight, but isn't the healthiest. Whereas now we have balanced diets. I eat, you know we eat freely and enjoy ourselves, but I you know I'm hitting a certain amount of calories a day, mm. and it's working, and it's quality, and we're filled with energy, and it's and I think yeah, like little adjustments like that, and it's yeah, it's decent. But also, as I say, if you're full of energy, you're going to get more passion for things. Yeah, and enthusiasm. Put more more effort into something mm. and that's where it comes so you sort of got to give yourself the 80 20 rule haven't you of being good 80 percent of the time and letting yourself go 20 percent of the time and yeah. then recognizing when to pull yourself back you know mm. unfortunately you know people that do give it all up and let themselves go totally normally end up on a downward slope yeah that's and i, I don't mean that judgmentally i'm just well, yeah, no, it's, it's that, that, then, then you, that then you start happen. start noticing that, look, yeah, because those is what the biggest thing that I noticed through having that that sort of fuck it mentality of just yeah, let's do it, yeah, let's do it, is like it's short term bursts of almost like happiness, like getting smashed, Whee! but then long term, how does that make you feel? A bit low, yeah, like you know, just going, oh, I'm not going to do any work this week, I'm just going to enjoy myself. Yeah, I don't know, it's a, it's a lot of instant gratification. Eating that food, having that triple cheeseburger, oh my God, <laughs> this is amazing. But long and then term, afterwards, uh, where does it whereas get Whereas now, there may be some areas where it's like a bit of discipline, a bit of like, oh, I'm not getting that instant hit, but overall, I'm spending 23 out of the 24 hours of the day feeling good. Yeah. And I think that's the key. And that doesn't mean, though, that you have to be you know, uh, the perfect size 10 and all that, you know. It's more you can about be, health. Yeah, you can be whoever you are. It doesn't matter as long as you actually have that internal discipline and that internal satisfaction in, yeah, in yeah, doing yeah. something and, you know, yeah. building yourself and making yourself go forward. So. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. I think on that note... So what we're saying is we, we like girlfriend, Joe. We like girlfriend, <laughs> yeah. Girlfriend's Respect. good. Girlfriend's, yeah, she's cool. Wicked. Well, yeah. on that note, we're, we've been rolling for an hour and ten. Wow. We're well, going to wrap it there. Flies, How you did you fun? enjoy yourself on Waffling Mum? Uh, yeah, it's good, actually. It's good. Can I do it again? Of course. Mm -hmm. Be sure. back on season two. Well, anyways, guys, <laughs> we hope you did enjoy this episode. If you did, leave a like, rating, subscribe if you're new, comment if you made it this far, saying, Mother, we love <laughs> your necklace. Oh, It's a you. real diamond. Yes, it is. Yeah, mental. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, and we'll see you in the next episode. Peace. Peace.